Christ. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Holy Cross as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. If you have a mobile device, you can find a worship guide with today's readings and text on the homepage of the Cathedral website, holycrossboston.com. Click the button that says worship guide at holycrossboston.com. Our entrance antiphon resurrexi. I am risen and I am always with you, alleluia. You have placed your hand upon me, alleluia. Your wisdom has been shown to be most wonderful, alleluia. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, 
that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, 
If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. 
So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, good morning, happy Easter to all. What a difference a year makes. Uh, a year ago, this cathedral was empty today, and now it's such a joy to see all of you here. Years ago, there used to be a television program called You Bet Your Life. It was the Groucho Marx show, and it was one of these quiz shows. And when there were contestants that were a little slow and unable to answer any questions correctly, Groucho would always ask, who is buried in Grant's tomb? And he accepted absolutely any answer for the consolation prize. But today the question is, who is buried in Christ's tomb? Who is buried in the Holy Sepulchre? And the answer to that question is no one. Christ is risen. He is alive. And that's why we are here this morning. In history, we see that usually when great men die, great personages die, there are fabulous funerals that go on for days and days with all kinds of pageantry and, and rituals. The Olympic Games that we celebrate every four years began in ancient Greece as funeral games to honor a great personage who had died. Today's gospel hints at Jesus' burial arrangements. There were no Olympic Games, there were no processions, there was no pageantry. It was like a COVID funeral in a borrowed grave. It was private, it was rushed. Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene, a couple of Jesus' friends, two of his secret disciples, Pharisees, who were closet Christians, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. It was Friday evening. The Sabbath was about to begin. He had to be buried before Sabbath started. Sunday morning, the gospel describes that first Easter morning as first light. Mary Magdalene is returning to the tomb. She's taking the ointment to be able to, to anoint Jesus. Yes, it was a rushed burial. 
When I was bishop in the West Indies, we had a terrible hurricane, and, and we had many burials and body bags and without any kind of ceremonies or rites or unable to embalm the body. That's the way Jesus' burial was. But it's Mary Magdalene, the faithful Mary Magdalene, who comes back Sunday because the Sabbath was over and she could travel around. She arrives with myrrh to put on the body. And what she found was startling. The borrowed tomb was empty. She did not understand. And she seeks out Peter and John. Peter had entirely missed the burial because he was so afraid and terrified that he stayed in the witness protection program rather than going to Calvary or to the Holy Sepulchre. But Peter and John run to the tomb and they find the burial cloths, what today we call the Shroud of Turin. But the tomb was empty. And for 2,000 years, pilgrims from all over the world have gone to that empty tomb to pray, the Holy Sepulchre. I once had the privilege of celebrating Mass there with a group of priests from Boston when we were on retreat, and it was the most moving experience of my life. But the empty tomb is only the first act, the beginning of the revelation of Jesus who has overcome death. He is alive. And for the 40 days of Easter, we see the risen Lord teaching all of us the new ways in which he is going to be among us. Not just in Jerusalem, not just in Galilee, but everywhere in the world and for all times. He shows us that he is present in the sacrament. Easter here, the apostles breathes on them. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. The first gift of the risen Lord is the Spirit and the ability to forgive. In the sacrament of forgiveness, Jesus makes his healing power present. Easter afternoon, the disciples meet this stranger on the road to Emmaus, and when they invite him in to have supper, they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Christ disappears, but the bread remains. In the Eucharist, the risen Lord is with us. And in his last instructions to us, he says, Go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Last night in this cathedral, we baptized new Christians. Thousands and thousands of people were baptized yesterday on Holy Saturday to fulfill the command of our risen Lord and who promised that through his sacraments he would continue to touch our lives. And he promises that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in our midst. And every time when we, like the myrrh bearers in the Gospels, reach out to help someone in need and pain, we are touching Christ to his presence. As Jesus in these Gospel days, in these days of Easter is teaching us how he is present to us, how he is always with us. The Lord had said, they will strike the shepherd and the flock will be scattered. And that's exactly what happens on Good Friday. The disciples are scattered, they're in hiding, they're full of fear. But the risen Lord comes back as the good shepherd and his first task is to gather the scattered. He appears to Mary Magdalene, who's scattered in her grief, and he calls her by name, and he gathers her to himself. He appears to Thomas, who's denied Jesus, and he says, Thomas, be not unbelieving, but believing, and he gathers Thomas to himself. He appears to Peter, who's denied Jesus three times, and he says, Peter, do you love me? Three times, he asks, and he gathers Peter to himself. There's a beautiful Franciscan tradition. It's the sixth mystery of our Franciscan crown rosary, that, that the very first person that Jesus appeared to was the Blessed Mother on Easter morning. They call it the encounter. But all of us in our lives 
are scattered by so many things scattered by COVID, scattered by our selfishness, scattered by our pain, by our fears, by our pride. But the risen Lord walks among us to gather us to himself. We have been scattered by the pandemic and death and sickness and isolation and loss of job and family. The risen Christ is alive, assuring us of his presence. Death does not have the last word. His gospel is a challenging message of joy. Jesus teaches us to love and to forgive, to identify with the suffering and the oppressed, to raise our voice against injustice, to return love for hatred, to be witnesses of his resurrection like those disciples on Easter afternoon who ran back from Emmaus to announce, we have seen the Lord, he is alive, and we recognized him in the breaking of the bread in the Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, filled with Easter faith, let us rejoice. Christ is risen, he loves us, he is with us, alive forever. Happy Easter. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, let us make known our needs to our Heavenly Father, who always hears our prayer with tenderness and love. For those who have been baptized, and for all Christians, that they may remain faithful to their baptismal promises in all circumstances of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer and for the dying, that their hope and strength may be Jesus, who through and beyond death has built a road to new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose experiences have discouraged or disillusioned them in life, that they may not remain obsessed by the past, but look forward to the future with its new prospects and opportunities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have committed themselves to serve the needs of others, that they may keep faith in a better world in which peace and justice are not empty words, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here in the joy of Easter, that we may be happy and joyful people who know that God loves us with an enduring love, and that we may radiate this love in one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Capitol Police Officer William Evans, that Christ, who conquered death, may welcome them to the eternal feast of life and light. Let Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer all of our petitions confidently through the intercession of Mary, the mother of the divine shepherd, as together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exalt and with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he's destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus et Sanctus Christi custodio.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Dear friends, the Easter Collection supports the care of senior priests from across our archdiocese through the Clergy Benefit Trust. We have placed baskets in the middle of the cathedral. And we sincerely appreciate your generosity this afternoon and throughout the year. Before the final blessing, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for joining us today and to wish all of you and your loved ones a very blessed Easter. May our Easter faith grow stronger and stronger so that the witness of our lives will be an invitation to others to embrace discipleship. We're so grateful to Monsignor O'Leary and his wonderful team, uh, the choir, the lectors, the servers, and all of those who have worked so hard in this holy week. And on behalf of them, we wish all of you a very blessed and a happy Easter. And now I would invite the choir to sing with me the Regina Chaley, which is the prayer that replaces the Angelus during these 40 days of Easter. Regina Chaley, let be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.